have a go at that dust. Oh, what dust, mate? Oh, it's so hot in here, no air con windows are down, just filled the cabin full of dust. This is this is living Barry. Oh really? Yeah, okay, what well, that's odd. No air con, windows down. It's weird. You folks in modern vehicles and feelers too, you wouldn't understand what it's like in driving an old dinosaur. Yeah, sure no. Begins, mate. The Maytown Old Township's not far from here, I think. So weird when you come to a place that's as remote as this and you just find relics. It's insane. How do, you, how do they even get this stuff out here? The mind boggles. It blows my mind to think that the 1850s and onwards, yeah. the 1800s onwards, this place here, all around us, would have been thriving, a massive community. It's, Hundreds of people. It's hard to believe. Shops, and right here, I was going to say we could have got a cold beer, we couldn't have. No. Would have been a lukewarm beer. But it would have been beer all the same. Right here is the pub. Yeah, I know. I, now, that's drew me straight here. Okay, yeah, you walk straight here like a magnet. Now, in case you haven't guessed, this right here, of course, is the famous Maytown, the old gold mining area just outside of Palmer Creek, the mighty. From here, we're heading that way, towards Laura, on the old coach road. And yep. I suggest we saddle up and get down there. Can you imagine, though, walking from Maytown to Laura with a wheelbarrow back in the day? I couldn't even imagine driving the old 30 down that track, mate. No, you're going to have air. How's the aircon back there, mate? There's none. How's the dust? Lots. I've got both of none. Look, I'm just hoping I can find some gold, because this is famous for its gold. I know where there's gold. In my Waco. Yep. Yeah, there is. Get out here. <laughs> here from monkey. The plan for this trip is very simple. Of course, we are on the old coach road that runs from Maytown to Laura, and that is exactly what we're going to be following. However, we plan to take as many side tracks as we possibly can to locations that perhaps only the locals know. And speaking of locals, we've enlisted the help of Julie, who has lived out here all her life and knows the area like the back of her hand. I'm up front on this trip in the trusty old D-Max and riding shotgun, as I've said, is my mate Julie who's lived in this part of the world all of her life. Behind me, my old mate Sean in the trusty Dirty 30. He is frothing over this trip, but something tells me with all this dust and no air conditioner, he's going to be a lot dirtier when it finishes. Sucking Sean's dust, unfortunately, is Dion from Scamper Campers and he's dead keen to do some R&D on one of his off-road camper trailers. And last but not least, up the back, we've got Pete in that beast of a GU that he calls Bessie from Queensland Conversions in Toowoomba. Apparently, guys, this obviously being the Palmer River, it goes right back up past the road up there, and every year they've got to redo this causeway. This gets washed away. Hard to believe they get that much water through. It is a bit hard to believe, isn't it? It's pretty shallow this time of year. Hardly even a trip. It's hard to believe that this region was once a bustling and thriving community with people from all over the world trying to seek their fortune finding as much yellow gold as they possibly could. How cool is this? This is actually the remains of an old mill put in by the Chinese many, many moons ago. These would have been the burners that would have run the crushing implements that crushed all the ore up, of course. A lot of the gold here was embedded in the ore. The only way to get it out was to crush it up and then just pan for it like you would do normally in the riverbeds, but they do it en masse through here. So um, real, I'm amazed at how well preserved it is, but I guess this area doesn't get a whole heap of weather like other parts of the Cape and being so dry, it hasn't, it hasn't actually rusted away. But then again, it'd be pretty hard for this bad boy to rust away. I was just talking to Sean about it though. Can you imagine getting this in here on horse and cart? Just phenomenal amounts of work in order to get a piece of shiny metal. I don't really get it. However, there's an easier way today of finding gold, and that is, of course, we all know that we've got tracker dogs and sniffer dogs. When you get to the airport, you'll get a sniffer dog that'll come out and it'll find fruit in your bags. There's dogs that nowadays can actually sniff your body and they can detect cancers in your body. Well, we've now got a dog that can detect gold out here. There's only one species of dog that'll do it. That's the golden retriever. With a comedy act like that, it's probably for the best that I stay out bush and as far out bush as possible. The Maytown to Laura track might be just about the perfect location. Wasn't long after crossing the Palmer River that we hit our first shaley steep climb. And as you can see, the D-Max loves this kind of terrain. 
That traction control works an absolute treat and has become one of my best friends. Come on up, Shorto. Yeah, come on, mate, I'll come up. Sean 8, the old Dirty 30, will walk up this. Get into it, mate. Two hands on the wheel for this one. Oh, Struth, that does not look right. What's going on there, Sean Nah. Oh, scared that's going to slide all the way down the hill then. Still got a tail car. Just driving up the hill. Massive bang, lost all traction, and um, something snapped. I was just trying to figure out what it was. It sounded like a tail shaft. But um, yeah, I'm starting to think it might be an axle, it might be a diff. First things first, we can't diagnose this on the side of the hill. So we're going to have to get Shauno up and onto some flat ground. And that's where the winch comes in so handy. We're a long way from anywhere out here, and as we all know, safety never takes a holiday. So it's out with all the recovery gear, and of course, taking all the safety precautions that go along with it. Safety precautions are always needed when doing recoveries, and of course, shano has got no drive on that truck, so this is gonna be one long, dead, heavy pull. We don't know what that noise is just yet, but guaranteed, it ain't good. Okay, now that we're safe and sound on flatter ground, we can have a closer look at just what's gone wrong with the Dirty 30. All right, it's pretty good. Sean has just run out of winch cable there, and because he's only got front wheel drive, there's no way he can drive up from there, so we've chopped the rear wheels just to be safe. We'll keep him on the winch now. We might even be able to drive it slowly, ever so slowly forward. See how we go. Get that winch cable off, and then I'll snatch him the rest of the way up. You'll notice here we've put a recovery blanket on the snatch strap and you're probably wondering why. Well, I just think that any precaution you can take in a recovery situation is well worth it. And putting a recovery blanket on a snatch strap takes all of five seconds and may just save a life. What's hard to see here is that we're all still on the side of the hill. So if we have to turn around, everybody must get to where Sean is now. I'll give you a bit of space on this one, Dion. I'll just sit back and wait for you to call me up. Dion's bringing the trailer up where he'll have plenty of room to turn around. This is loose and shaly. He's going to have to use the right boot, not hold back. That 79 is an absolute animal and sounds like it's growling its head off. Chuck in the lockers and away he went in that trailer well. It just follows and does what it's told. Look at that. He got up that hill and left everyone for dust. Last but not least, Pete's bringing Bessie up. Something tells me he's not even going to notice there's a hill there. He's built that truck to handle just about anything touring in Australia can throw. We're still not 100% sure what the problem is, but we are 100% sure we can't fix it up here. No, that no, means no, no, we've no. got to get the Dirty 30 down off this hill. All right, here's that sat phone, mate. Cheers, mate. There's the charger. We'll get that on charge. Yep. Good idea to have the sat phone fully charged, because chances are we're going to be calling someone <laughs> to get us in and get us out of here. Uh, For the yeah. meantime, though, no one's going to come up to the top of this hill and get us. Nope. So we've got to get this vehicle down. There's zero drive, no drive to front or rear, so um, I'm like a three-ton bullet coming down this hill, no doubt. So we're going to put a strap on the back to Bessie, the big GU and um, everyone's going to get out of my way, probably. All right, mate, just put that strap on, eh? Yep. Yep, we'll get down there. safety. With no drive, it means that shauno has got absolutely no engine braking at all. And the Dirty 30 hasn't got the best brakes at the best of time. As a safety precaution, we've put a strap from Bessie to the back of the Dirty 30, so that at least okay. Pete can use engine right. braking plus his brakes to try yeah, and slow yeah. Shauno down. Two so hands on the wheel for this one. I'm not following you down this one, eh? <laughs> So you got no choice for it now. Oh. Right. I 
I'll tell you what, I know you're on there. I don't think Bessie's ever gone downhill so fast in her life. Yeah, I can feel myself pulling you down. With Sean O under tow and daylight rapidly fading, there was no way we were going to make it out to the main road today. Only chance was to set up camp with a million stars and one busted dirty 30. Yeah. You know these rivers are full of gold. It's it's River. River area, yeah. Exactly, it's famous for its gold. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people come here prospecting. You know, Dude is telling me you can literally walk the riverbank sometimes yeah. and find gold. Yep. Um, yep. A lot, a lot of picking up a lot of rocks. Yeah, a lot of people do that. That's yep. one method. Another yep. method is, a, of course, a gold detector. Metal detector, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what are you 30, getting at here? Third is a pan. Look, I've got a fourth way. Oh, any gold. Golden retriever. Well, <laughs> fifth way then. Okay. All right, a stick, right? Gold, gold is a metal. It has a magnetic field. Watch and learn. Honestly, no. Don't do this. Look, watch, watch. Don't do this, mate. What are you doing? Come on, I need you to feel positive thoughts here. Feel positive, that's going to help you? Definitely in this direction, yeah. mate. Follow me. You're cooked, mate. I'm feeling a very strong, very strong force field over here. You're not, what? No, it's not there. What are you doing? Oh, here we go. You can always find a bit of gold, mate. It's not even in the ground. <laughs> it's not even buried. Oh, you drink that, go on. you got to find your own. Okay. Beauty yeah, of prospecting. Yep, I'll go. I know exactly where to find one. In the way. In the way, okay. <laughs> you didn't even bury it. Why didn't you bury it? Tonight we're cooking up a bit of organic pork. Now, the reason I say it's organic, because only a couple of days it was running around causing havoc up in the Dane Tree. Now, we're cooking up with a few local herbs and ingredients. Actually, nearly everything I'm using tonight has been sourced from the same little property up in the Dane Tree. Now, PJ, if you're watching, thank you very much, mate. It's um, filled the Waco nicely, and I reckon it's gonna make a great meal tonight. So, first things first, in the Waco. I'm gonna, beer, I'm gonna beer, do you? Um, got a half full. <laughs> All right, I've got herbs, chilies, and a bit of ginger in there as well, so that'll go really nice. Oh, quite a hefty thing. No, they are, they are. This is actually all PJ's produce, isn't it? It is, it is. Even though, no, these aren't, these are. No, that, that's the only thing in the meal, that's. Kumara. I'm just literally gonna coat it in all the ingredients and put yep. it straight in the coals. I'm gonna try and slow cook it for about three hours if I can. So you don't have a beer. So yeah, no. yeah, right. yeah, so cool. just chuck it. It just fits the camp oven perfect. So salt and pepper, fair bit of it. All right, now. What I want to do with the pig is just make a couple of little incisions into this pork. Oh, I've got a bit of rosemary straight from PJ's garden. The rosemary, I just want to cut, oh, pull little sprigs off like this and jam it into some of those little cracks I just made. I've got some basil, some chilies. I'm just cutting those chilies up into little pieces. And I just want to see how hot they are. Oh, that's, that's sensational. That's, that's really hot. All right. Next is ginger. Hey, Graham. Yeah, mate. Can you help me with something here, bud? Yeah, mate. What do you need, mate? You're a chili man, right? Yeah. These are the most flavoursome chilies I've ever had. Have you bitten into it? Yeah, yeah I, pff, I did it on camera no, a second ago. Okay. Oh, okay, no, no, fair call. Cool. You bite the tip off that, and I'll bite the tip off that. You I've, eat that. I've already eaten a bit. Yeah. You bite oh. all that off. Go. And oh, <laughs> they're so damn hot. Oh. <laughs> How many of those did you put in there? Heaps. I'm all right? No, you're good. Okay. Like I was saying, a bit more ginger. Pomelo. You get a lot of juice out of one of these. Yeah, really juicy. It's actually not bad, does Literally cross between a grapefruit and an orange. I've squeezed the absolute heck out of that. I'm just going to chuck that in down beside the pork. There's about, probably about nearly an inch of juice yeah. and a uh, bit of olive oil and stuff at the bottom. You'd gravy, couldn't you? Yeah. You probably would. And the whole idea is when you put this down in the coals, that's just going to bubble away and just almost steam through the... Sure. I'm going to put this on. Let's do this. Three hours, mate. Three hours? Yeah, mate. That'll be a few beers. Or two or one. Well, here you go. It's about two and a half hours in. It's going to be quite hot, dude. Oh, it's really hot. Yeah. Oh, it looks really good. That looks about perfect. 
Come on, Pete. <laughs> Boys, the smell of that from over there, is it all right? Think is it ever you can really? You can yeah. smell? Help yourself, mate. Eh? All right, here we go, boys. No, mate, that is sensational. There we go. Organic pork cooked on a campfire. It's about as good as it gets in the bush, I reckon. That is superb, mate. Pomelo, we've got sweet potatoes. Yep. You know, everything from this area combined in one pot on the plate. That's about as good as it gets in the bush. Whew, that chilli has not mm. decreased in heat. You can taste the chilli. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> If you just stood up, sit back down, because coming up we find out the fate of the Dirty 30. Sean O and Pete were up before sunrise and managed to tow the Dirty 30 out to south of the Palmer River, where Justin managed to bring the flat truck out to pick the Dirty 30 up and take him back to Cairns. First time in probably about 400,000 kilometres. A little bit devastating. I can't thank you enough for coming out here and... It's all right, Sean, any time, mate, any time. Uh, what do you think's wrong? Transfer case. Gone. Rear diff. Gone. Okay, yep, 10, 10 out of 10 for reckoning. <laughs> <laughs> with the Dirty 30 headed back into town for much needed repairs, Sean I could have jumped in with someone else and ridden shotgun, but that's not his style. He's kicked the camera crew out of the 80 series and he's taken control. Now, I had serious issues with letting Sean O drive the camera car. You see, here's my logic. We don't particularly need the Dirty 30, but we really need the camera car. Just go easy there, buddy. The old camera car flexes up all right there. No, mate, no, no. Looks like a land cruiser going down a hill with swags on the road. And just as I suspected, and I knew, to be honest, the D-Max walked down there with zero issues at all. This little ute and I, we're fast becoming good mates. You've got to hand it to a company that's prepared to put a product to the test on DVD in one of the most remote and inhospitable locations in Australia. And Dion is that guy. He backs his product and he's not afraid to show it. And Pete from Queensland Conversions isn't afraid to get out and use this newly engineered chop to put it right through its paces and make sure that when you get yours done, it's perfect for any touring solution in Australia. Get straight into it, boys. Straight up here. Looks like a few steps up there. Yeah, it's just really rocky, sort of bumpy stuff that you know it's pretty easy to lose traction on, I suppose. Oh, shake around. Whoa, oh, that's insane. Go the big 80. Graham, just make it look too easy. It's all about line, mate. With tracks this rocky and narrow and with drop-offs this steep, it just absolutely blows my mind that the first vehicles through here, if you can call them vehicles, were Cobb & Co coaches. It was another time and another era. And I tell you what, things have really changed today. When you get up the top, do yourself a favour and have a look over your right shoulder. Look at that drop-off. Of course, what goes up must come down, and the old coach road has plenty of both. On every trip we do, the camera car has to go where we go, and as a result of which it often tackles the toughest terrain before we do. It's been the unsung hero of many a DVD trip, and now it gets its time in the spotlight. <laughs> Good on it. Freak, this might even pick a wheel or two up. Alexa. Right, yeah, I can already tell that I'm going to lift some. Blokes, it looks like a bit of a choose your own adventure track. I'm going to take what I think is the medium grade one. It looks, it actually looks pretty hard as you get close to it. Nope. Slightly different. 
keep in line, I think I need. Nope, that is, this is where a rear locker would really help me. Okay, I might um, have a go at the other option. Oh, that's so dusty. Wait, have you put it in low range? You want to put it in four wheel drive? <laughs> You're out. He's not going to make it up there. It's not worth risking doing CVs and other damage like that, so he's got to come the easy way. Yes! yes. Woo. Up we get. Ooh, what is it? There it is. Yeah, you're up, mate. Come on up when you're ready. I reckon he'll do it. You reckon he'll do it? Maybe not. I don't think he will. But he can, have a, he can have a rally. Yes! Yeah, how good's this? A nice little steep rocky bit. Sort of looks like it's been blown out to make a road up through here. You've got a big hole, we could get stuck in straight up here. Come on, old girl, through you go. Late in the afternoon and we'd already started to talk about finding a campsite when one last hill appeared out of nowhere. It wasn't really much, but just as Sean neared the top, things went pear-shaped. Too easy when you pick that right line, it just crawls up. Right about now, keep your eyes on that front left tyre. There, that is not supposed to happen. What's happened here is the kingpin bolts have come loose and all bar one have sheared out of there. Yeah, see that? That means that wheel is not being held on by much at all. This is going to take some serious bush mechanics to get us back on the track. And something tells us we're not going anywhere in a hurry. No, no, just stay in there. Stay in there, get some tools. Where'd it do it? Just there somewhere. I was, I was driving in this like rut yeah. on the way up, and then it just went, and started steering out. You weren't out. even gassing it. You walked up. Just... Mate. Found one. Well, I'll tell you what, there's awkward spots to do things. And then there's that spot. That's kind of like the, the pinnacle, the top of an awkward spot to do things. Get new studs. Okay, well this will get us back to the camp tonight then. If you just put that one in and then put the ratchet. That's right. Okay. Yep. What do you reckon, Pete? I'm gonna go and get some parts. Pete's gonna get some parts. I'm gonna move the D-Max up and we'll see how we go. Tools, some parts. <laughs> one from this side. Maybe. They snapped snapped off inside. Oh, they snapped off inside, so we've got one bolt. So I've got one bolt. So I can put one in, and then ratchet strap around it, get that wheel straight, and I could drive it to camp. So to make sure that we're as safe as we possibly can be, we've brought Bessie up to anchor the rear of the 80 Series. We've chocked all the wheels and made sure that only one person is working under the vehicle at any one time. We've done everything we can to make this situation as safe as possible. After manoeuvring the 80 into a better position, we're now using a winch to hold it there 
put Bessie up behind it to brace it, chock the wheels. And now, let's see if we can get this fix a little more permanent and get into camp. Pete, because Pete came up with an absolutely magic idea where he stole one of the, the bolts out of the kingpin knuckle, we put that through, and um, we've used a ratchet strap to hold the rest of it on. It's not a pretty fix, mate. What did you say before? Check it every 10,000 kilometres or so. I think we might have to do that, mate, every about 10 metres, I reckon, but I reckon it'll get us to camp, which is the main thing, mate, because I'm, I'm feeling like a 4 foot at you. Yeah. <laughs> Four and a half hours of ratchet straps and dust later, we managed to limp ourselves to the top of the hill where we found a small clearing. This would be camp for the night and the boys got a well-deserved beer. This is awesome. Wow. Look when we just decided to go down an old mine shaft that Julie knows of down here and um, the hope is we're going to find a brown tree snake so pretty excited. What do you reckon we go? Straight in? I think so. Uh, Straight yeah. down? Oh, here we go. This <laughs> All right, oh no. Obviously, it goes without saying, you just don't wander down a mine shaft if you're not sure what's going on. We're on the, we're on the right track. We're, we're about five metres into this shaft, and already we've got skins just laying here. But this is a classic example how a little bit of local knowledge can really bring out an area's secrets. Whoa, there's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. Yep. When you handle a snake, yeah. always keep an open hand. Always an open hand. Yep, don't close in on them and just support their body weight. These little brown tree snakes are relatively harmless and this old mine shaft we would have driven straight past had it not been for Julie. They're skeletons. These are ones that haven't been able to find food. It's moments like these that makes trips like these so damn memorable. You know, I'm pretty privileged to be down here right now. This is in my element. I'm absolutely loving it right now. I reckon we've got to look for another snake before we get back to camp. Yeah. All right, done. No worries. Don't you go anywhere, because coming up after the break, we literally limp our way off the old coach road, saving the best bits till last. With the camera car in limp mode and a lot of track to go, breakfast was done, swags were packed, and we were on the tracks before the sun had hit the horizon. Yeah, she's feeling, mate. Look, I'm just going real slow and steady, just really trying to baby this 80 series. We get to a challenging bit where you're not comfortable, I reckon we just winch it, eh? Yeah, look, to be honest, I'm not even going to try and drive any challenging, um, you know, just can't get a tow truck out here. I need to get this vehicle back to Laura. Well, that's, I think that's the crux of the matter, isn't it? There is no option. Folders Hotel site, so that's the hardest bit of the track, I think. What I've been told, yeah, it's the hardest bit of the track. We're almost, for this actual Maytown to Laura, we're just about done. You're almost home and hose. Mm. But this is just an extra little bit that I've been told if you get up the top of here, not only have you got a historical site up there, but of course it's got a fantastic view. Well, why don't we why don't we punt up here, yep. have a look at the view, mm -hmm. and you just go continue slow. crawling along slowly. I'm gonna go first gear low range, so All you right. might have to wait for me at the other end. We might actually beat you. <laughs> But I can't miss out on this, mate. I've come No, this definitely, mate. I would be up there in a heartbeat if I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, you just keep on the radio. Yeah. I reckon you'll be in range. Okay. And we'll, um. just, we'll punt up and have a look. Cool, man. Cool, mate. All right. We'll see you down there somewhere. I reckon about 45 cold chisel songs and I'll be out there. <laughs> I don't think that's actually not a lie. Look at that old axe. Gee whiz. That's a doozy. That's seen some use, hasn't it? Oh, my goodness. Do you reckon this is the old folders hotel site? You reckon it was? I think it was. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You can see the structural base here. Yeah, once Stone again, the, the Chinese were very pedantic about making the flat surfaces, so you can always tell the Chinese diggings around the areas because of the way the stones are laid. They're certainly not natural. No. And then you'll find the old pottery um, that was all imported. Yep. What they used to do from the bottles is actually make them into glasses. And they'd get hot wire and they'd soak it in fuel and they'd cut the tops of the yeah. bottles and they'd use those as glasses so quite often you'll find them just with the tops cut off and they used to drink out of them. Yeah, hmm. oh, yeah these really are rock steps. They are, aren't they? I might even jump out of here and just have a look at that next big one. Scrape a bit of a line through I think. Some serious sized rock steps here. You can see where others have been doing a bit of track maintenance here. Alright. 
Slow and steady wins the race, I reckon. Terrain like this makes that D-Max absolutely shine. I mean, the traction control just works, and that automatic transmission means that I have full control over the vehicle and can go as slow as I want to minimise any underbody damage on these massive rock steps. The key here is to pick your line and just crawl slowly and gently. Tyre pressures play a key and critical role in doing this. Too high and you'll be bouncing and not getting any traction. Too low and you risk running your tyre off the bead, but just right and you really do get maximum traction and maximum control in a rock crawling environment. Dion's up and of course in the 79 he just loves lifting a wheel. The added weight of the camper trailer means that Dion's got to be just that little bit more aggressive on his approach, but as you can see, he's done it and done it with relative ease, and that is quite a feat on a track like this. Big lift, big tyres, lockers, Pete's made that look easy, but he's also having a lot of fun doing it. The views are already spectacular, but we've got one absolute doozy of a challenge in front of us before we make it to the top. The beauty of all that rubble at the base of this rock climb means that building up that track is an absolute cinch. The boys are going to try and put some stuff right where my wheels go, just so that I get that clearance of the front to give it a red hot shot. I am however going to take it fairly easily, a broken CV, or worse, out here could spell disaster. We've already got one vehicle in limp mode, we don't need two. Alright oh, Graham, come through mate. Right, mate, I'll just speed you up to it, and we'll just see how it looks and feels. It gets bigger as you get closer, trust me. You do want me to do a little bit of track building? Pete, have, have a crack, you've seen where the wheels are. The back is my main concern, is lifting that dead weight up over the top, but... The control of the auto is just so good. Yeah, that's what I thought would happen. What do you reckon about going back a little recovery. bit and uh, using some max tracks to make a ramp? Oh, look at that ramp. <laughs> yeah? Let's give it a go. Whilst the max tracks got spat out on that first attempt, it gave me a great idea. I'm going to place them back and then use them as a ramp under winch to clear the underbody of the D-Max and make this rock step just disappear. I think I'm coming up, I think I'm coming up. It's important here that you let the winch do the work and not start spinning your wheels, otherwise you're just going to spit those Max tracks out and any other track building that you've done and totally delete the work. Woohoo! This is done mate, well done. Right down, bring it on up mate. Dion's wheelbase here means that as his front wheels are trying to crawl the second rock step, his rear wheels are still down on the first rock step, and that's making it virtually impossible for him. Right. It's an easy witch. Yeah. It's a two second witch. Yeah. We don't want to do any damage, as I've said before, and I think the only option here is to winch him up and through. And that's a really good effort for a bloke towing a camper trailer. I reckon if we want to get this trailer up, we're going to have to build an entire ramp for him out of rocks. You're not going to get up like this, there for a burst right off. We're going to use exactly the same method that got the D-Max up, which means bringing the Max tracks back into the play, and of course, building up a lot of the track with this rubble that's lying at the base. And you can really see just how easy things can be when you do it right. Yes! yes. Go! Oh, what? What? That thing's a, it's an animal. Big Bessie! What do you reckon? Is Bessie going to drive it? Let's see. Ridiculous! That is one hell of a four-wheel drive. And not a bad drive either, Pete. Good on you, mate. All right, stay in your car, you show off. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure which 
Only 10 metres from that last little jump up and we found yet another. This one's actually undercut and scoops those tyres up so that when you hit the back, you skid completely offline. Doesn't want to do it. Gonna do a bit of track building. Yeah, we might have to, I think. So I think this is going to be the place I'll start rather than getting pushed over here. All right, let's give it another go. What a difference a little bit of track maintenance makes. I tell you what, just give it a go. Next That's time it. you're stuck. It's all, it's all track building. Nice one, guys. It blows my mind to think that this road has been cut through solid rock using hand tools and maybe the odd stick of dynamite. It really does put things back into perspective and makes winching up it look like child's play when you consider just how hard it would have been to put the original track through. There's a uh, loot off camber here, boys. I'm gonna have to pick a pretty careful line through here, I think. Oh, sorry. No, there goes sides. <laughs> <laughs> this track is just not letting up. These wombat holes are absolutely huge. And like all wombat holes, they're off camber and off kilter, which means you've really got to pick your line and just keep that momentum up. Lockers, well. Oh, nice wheel lift, Dion. Well, I'm starting to get used to that feeling of being sideways on these tracks. Lockers and traction control, that's the answer. The traction there looks a bit sketchy. Ah, traction's good. Hey mate. Bugger lugs. How'd you go? Yeah, good. Slow trip? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Real slow. I think my top speed is about uh, seven kilometres an hour. Toyota speed? I just sort of punched the roof when that happened. I was pretty excited. Okay, I haven't reached up the figures yet. No, but I've got a bit of a rock step. It might be the last challenge of the track. I'm not yeah. sure, but I wanted to wait for you guys. Yeah, it you looks can't, reasonably you can't, wide. You can't get around You, around you, you yeah. can't get around Ah, good, good, good. All right, we'll so get going then. We'll go down. I'm just going to take it real easy. Yeah, do that. And um, it should be good. Right on, mate. Sean's been on the track for an hour or two now while we've been having fun getting to the top of the mountain. We're now back in convoy and we only have a couple of kilometres to go to get back to what is considered to be a far more major road. So do you guys miss me or what? I haven't had to take my toolbox out of the back of the canopy since you left, mate. <laughs> well, just watch that step. That one sort of wants to put you into the embankment. Just to feather that brake. Nice and slow what you want. Oh, that's... Sean has been checking that tyre religiously, but let's not forget, it's still being held on by ratchet straps and good luck. He's got it this far, let's get it all the way now, mate. Slow and steady wins the race. There you go. Little scrapes, but overall not too bad. Bit of a choose your own adventure, boys. Yeah, I'm trying not to lift wheels, but ah uh, no. It's a good move. Sean has had one attempt at that, didn't make it. It's straight out with a winch. We are so close to making it to the end of this track. This is no time for taking chances. I could see a line from the base of that little hill, and I knew the D-Max could do it. All right, mate, come on up. I had to use a little bit of right boot, but I had all the confidence in the world that we were going to make it to the top. That thing's just an animal, pure animal. Would you look at that thing flex? It's like a sick giraffe. 
you can really tell that Pete's built that truck for off-road touring in any terrain that you can throw at it anywhere in Australia. Once you've passed the tough stuff, it's a relaxed and easy drive on single lane tracks all the way through to Laura. It's a good chance to sit back and reflect on what is, in my opinion, one of the best tracks in the Cape. If you drive past the old coach road, I reckon you've missed out on one of the best tracks in the Cape. You owe it to yourself if you've come this far to give it a crack. Sean, what do you think of that, mate? Look, the old coach road, you've got to do it. It's one of the tougher tracks in Cape York. People have talked this one up, and yep. I was scared it wasn't going to live up to expectation. I broke two four-wheel drives with that track. So it really did, it really is tough. It's just hard. It's hard on vehicles, hard on people. It's only hard on vehicles if you take a Shawnee with you. <laughs> My advice is, don't miss the old coach road and you hurry to get up to the Cape, zooming straight past the Royal River here where we're standing. Go in and check it out and if you do, make sure you take a left-hand turn up to Folders Hotel. When you see the, hot uh, the hotel site, continue up and drive that cutting. It is unbelievable. This bloke wouldn't know that, however. I don't know that. I'm gonna have to watch the DVD to find out watch exactly what happened. <laughs> no, seriously guys, in all seriousness, do the coach road, the old coach road to Laura, you won't regret it. You also won't regret saying no when Sean o says, can I come along? I'll tell you what you won't regret as well. What? Is getting the pot of gold at the Laura pub. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is a gold area. It really is. And the That's... only gold I'm going to find is probably one of the best. That's, is, is that the joke that you opened? No, to? I said it all wrong. That was a terrible joke, folks. We will catch you next time on Four Wheel Drive Action. Have a good hard think about yourself. I'm going to go. Have a real good Do that. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll need to do good. For more information and to find out all the details that we didn't mention on the camera, read my article in the next magazine. Believe me, you're going to want to know about all this stuff. If you enjoyed this DVD, don't forget that you can watch every episode of 4 Wheel Drive Action because it's available for download in HD from our massive online library. There are over 100 episodes available for your viewing pleasure. Also, if you want to keep up to date with 4 Wheel Drive Action, then like our Facebook page and you'll get heaps of videos, epic pictures, there's competitions, and a whole lot more. Get involved, folks. I'm sure you won't regret it.